Well, hey everybody and welcome to Groundswell Online. My name is Jeremy and I'm on the team here at Groundswell and it's so great to have you joining us here today in this way. Whenever you're joining us for this online gathering, wherever you're tuning in from, hey, it's so great to be able to gather together in this way today and we're glad that you made the decision to come and be here with us. Uh, if it's one of your first times joining us here at Groundswell, we wanna say just an extra special welcome to you. Thanks so much for taking the step to accept the invitation, to click on that link, to maybe you're just scrolling through YouTube and here we are. Uh, it's great to have you with us here today. If you would like to get more connected with us, there are ways for you to do that. Check out the video description below that it'll have some of those links down there. You can fill out our connect card. Uh, that's just going to get you on our email list so that you're in the loop on everything going on. Uh, I would really encourage you to follow us on social media. Connect with us on Instagram or on Facebook. Both of those pages can be found under the tag uh, Groundswell NS. Uh, and that's gonna be a great place for you to go to get just in the loop on all that's going on at Groundswell in the days and the weeks ahead. You may already know this if you've been tracking with us, but we are back in person gathering at our Prince Street location in Truro. Uh, we've been gathering at 9 and 10.30 every Sunday, but actually this coming Sunday, the June the 26th. Uh, so if you're watching this on June 19th, the next Sunday in Truro, we are making the shift to one gathering for the summer at 10 a.m. Uh, we are excited to have everyone together in the room for one gathering. Our usual rhythm is to have two gatherings every Sunday, but for the summer months, we're really looking forward to having the opportunity to get everyone together in the room for one gathering each Sunday. To kick that off on June the 26th, there's a couple things that you need to know. For one, uh, we're having kind of a summer kickoff end of school uh, party in GS Kids. So there's gonna be treats and games and all sorts of fun stuff going on. So if you have kids and you live in the area. We would love it if you would come and join us for that. And after church on the 26th, we're gonna be heading over to Victoria Park in Truro, meeting at the Picnic Pavilion for uh, a party, an after party, to celebrate the kickoff of summer, to uh, eat some food. We're gonna be providing pizza and some other snacks and water on the side. Uh, so we'll have you all looked after there. You can bring something along for yourself if you'd like, of course, uh, but there'll be games and all sorts of stuff going on. So we'd really encourage you to come and join us on the 26th at 10 a.m for that gathering in person at 759 Prince and to join us afterwards for our uh, pizza in the park after party. That's just gonna be such a great time together. Uh, we would really appreciate it too if you could go ahead and sign up for that. You can find the link to do that in the video description below. That's just gonna help us know how many pizzas we need to order so that we make sure we have more than enough for everybody. But we'd love to see you there for that. We'd love to have you join us on a Sunday as we gather in person. Uh, but also, we just love being able to gather together here in this way too. We don't take lightly the the, the gift that it is that we're able to come together from all the different places, uh, from offices, from bedrooms, from living rooms, on back porches, from different places across the province in Atlantic Canada even. Uh, we really uh, love getting to gather together in this way and we believe that this time together now is specifically and uniquely going to be encouraging and challenging for so many of you who are tuning in today. And so we're really glad to have you here with us. Looking forward to hearing a word from our pastor, uh, Tammy Giffen, but for now I'm gonna hand it off to the band who's gonna lead us in a time of worship. So we would just invite you to join us as we sing and we worship God through these songs.
that song we sang, um, it definitely has a special meaning for me um, as I think back on my life and just times when I was so full of shame um, because of who I was and full of shame because of things I had done in my life. And that shame really kept me like just trapped. Um, but it was when I trusted God with my life and when I trusted Jesus that like he would be who he said he would be to me, that he would give me grace, that he would bring me like transformation in my life. It's when I chose to believe in that, trust in that, that the, like, the grip that shame had over me was gone. And that was all because of Jesus. Um, and so that's my story today to say that the name of Jesus does change things, that he does change things in our lives. He does change the way we see the world, see ourselves. Um, and he does transform us. Um, and so that's what we believe about Jesus today, that that's the, the God that we sing to, that that's the power that he holds um, in the way that he loves us. And so we're gonna sing this song. Um, it's called Jesus Over Everything. And I just wanna invite you to sing that over your shame, over your fear, um, that it's Jesus over everything, that he is greater, that he is stronger, that he's enough for us this morning. So let's sing that out together.
turn our eyes to you today. We just ask that you would meet us here, God, as we lift your name high for all that it is, as we believe together that the name of Jesus changes things, that you change things in our lives, in our world, and in our town. That's why we sing, that's why we follow you, because you are good and you um, bring life. So God, would you help us to take a step closer to you today? Would you give us a hunger and a desire to know you and to seek you um, and to follow you with our lives? We just thank you for the gift of your presence with us, that you remind us of things that we forget, that you give us perspective to go out and face, face the rest of our day, face the rest of our week, because we've met with you. So God, we just ask that you would continue to come, you continue to speak to us and continue to change us the better in this place today. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can grab a seat. At Groundswell, we uh, we love families. We love families. We want to be a church that invests in families and creates environments uh, for families to grow in their faith and grow in community with other people. Uh, and we also feel a responsibility to those families um, to walk alongside of them and journey with them. And so we are going to have an awesome opportunity this morning to join with four families and dedicating their children. So I'm going to invite those families to come. You can just come up these side stairs here. Steve York, maybe Steve, will you come as well? Thank you. <laughs> you can come forward, come this way, come, come this way a little. We gotta make a little room. Uh, like I said, we feel very blessed and fortunate to have so many families here at Groundswell, and we are honored that, um, oh gosh, I'm getting emotional already. Um, we're just honored to be able to journey with them um, and to love on their families, to love on their children, and to create a space where they can grow in their knowledge and understanding of God. Um, and so today, these parents are coming forward to say in front of all of you that that's their heart's desire, that their heart's desire is that they would be found able to help their children grow in their faith and their knowledge of the Lord. Um, and then our job in this endeavor is to, to do our part as well. So. Um, as we do this, I'm going to ask these guys a couple questions, um, and, and the answers are we, we do or we will or whatever you want to say. Um, and, and then I'm going to ask you a question as well, uh, because this is, a, this is a family affair here. We, we want to be a community that journeys through life together through great things and terrible things, and um, so... We are going to commit to each other as well that we will be on this journey together. And I know that there are many family members here today uh, to, to be part of this too. So um, Adelina's working on stealing the show here. <laughs> uh, it's just awesome. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask these families a few questions. Um, do you accept the responsibility of setting an example in your home for your children by the way you live, talk, act, and love? We do is the answer. <laughs> do you accept the responsibility to guide, instruct, and pray for your children with the hope, with the hope that someday they might be led to their own personal relationship with Jesus? Okay, congregation, um, I'm going to invite you 
families, I'm gonna invite you to stand. If you call Groundswell home, I'm gonna invite you to stand. And if you're visiting today and you just wanna put your support behind what's happening here, I'm gonna invite you to stand as well. And I have a question for all of you, for families, for, for Groundswell community, um, for those of you who wanna put your support behind these families. Do you pledge to pray for these children? for these families, to encourage and support them? And do you pledge to help these parents to live up to the promises that they are making today? We do is the answer. Uh, so it's my, my pleasure to be able to, to dedicate these children. Uh, and I'm gonna, I want to just pray for them. Um, Steve is here, he's gonna hold a hand over them as well. And maybe if you're, if you're here in the congregation, you wanna hold a hand out to just like put your hand on this prayer as well. Lord God, we are so thankful for the gift of these families. Lord, we are thankful for the way that you are already working in their lives. Lord, we are thankful for these parents who stand here today with their children, um, just pledging in front of all of these people. And it's their heart's desire to do all that they can in, in their ability to raise these children to come to know you. And so Lord, we pray blessing over these families. We, pr we pray favor over these families. Lord, we pray that you would give these parents all that they need. To, to invest in these children in a way that honors you. And Lord, I also pray for this Groundswell family. Uh, as we journey through life together with these families, Lord, would you help us to, to see places where they need our help? Would you help us to be people who encourage them and love them and teach them and train them and participate in all aspects of the ups and the downs of life? that we could be found faithful to the pledges that we have made before you today. And so God, will you just do what only you can in these families? Lord, will you draw them close to you, close to each other? And when you give these parents the ability to pour life and hope and love and truth into their children in a way that honors you. And we pray all these things in the strong and mighty name of Jesus, amen. Can you give these families a round of applause this morning? Crying mess. You are free. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, we, um, we have been, well, first of all, actually, I wanted to give a shout out. I don't know if he's in the room anymore, but how about James this morning on drums? Yes. I don't know if he's in here or where he went, but oh man, he's like killing it on drums today. It's just like, the, the Bible says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, and I got, that's what I, when I think about drums, it's like a joyful noise, I love it. And he was just killing it today, so uh, it's awesome. We started a series last week on how to hear God, and we're basing it on this amazing book um, that I'm recommending to you, uh, called How to Hear God. It's by an author named Pete Gregg. A simple guide for normal people. We're normal people, and this is a great resource for us. And so clearly we're not gonna cover all of this in four weeks, so I really wanna encourage you to, to go out and, and grab his book um, because it will be a blessing to you. Super helpful. Uh, but, but basically the premise of this, this series that we're on is that God speaks today. He speaks today, and we have the capacity and the ability, and we have the invitation to be able to hear God's voice. And so over the next couple of weeks, we're trying to, to learn together, well, how do we get better at recognizing God's voice then? How, how do we do that? Um, and, and if learning to hear God's voice matters so much in our lives, how do we grow in that ability to discern when God is speaking, to discern how to hear his voice? And this book that is written by Pete Gregg, 
it actually centers around this one passage of scripture that we're gonna read through it again today for any of you who weren't with us last week so that you know where we are. And it's a passage of scripture that is found in the New Testament. Then the New Testament is the smaller section of the Bible in, in the, towards the end, and it chronicles the life of Jesus and his followers. And so the New Testament is broken into these sections that are called the books, um, and it starts out Matthew, Mark, and then Luke. Luke is the third book, and that's where we are today uh, in chapter 24. And it's these, there's, they're, they're these two people, they are walking on a road. I, they're kind of like commuters in our day, so they're traveling between Jerusalem and a place called Emmaus, and they're walking, they're commuting. <laughs> and, but for them, it's about a two-hour commute by foot, um, and so they're walking along and, and they're discussing all the things that have just happened to them. So they've been in Jerusalem and so in the, in the timeline, it is after Jesus has died. It is just after his resurrection. And all of these things are happening and going on for these, these people in their lives and they're trying to wrap their heads around what just happened. They saw Jesus die and then they've They've heard that the tomb is empty, and they're, they're just trying to sort it all out in their mind. So they're walking, and they're talking, and along comes this person who ends up being Jesus, but comes along beside them and starts to talk to them. So I'm going to read a pretty long section of scripture, but it's a story, and it's telling us um, what, what is happening here. And there are five ways in this passage that Jesus is speaking to, to these people. And so I'm going to read it to you. Uh, he asked them, he is Jesus, he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, so the other disciples, and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. So there's like 20 verses of scripture here. And in these 20 verses, Jesus communicates in five different ways. So he communicates through conversation as they walked and talked. He communicates through the scriptures as he explained the scriptures to them through the act of breaking bread together over this meal. Prophetically, as their eyes, it says their eyes were open to realize who he was. And inwardly, when he, it says he spoke directly into their hearts. Now today what I wanna do is I wanna take these five things and wanna break them into two sections. And the two sections are the two main ways that, that God speaks to us. We're trying to like simplify this down so we can wrap our heads around it. But it's the two main ways that God speaks to us through his word 
and through his whisper. Okay, through his word and through his whisper. And so we're going to focus on the word today, and then next week we're going to focus on his whisper. But for a second, I just need to get kind of academic on us for a minute, okay? Um, Because there's something that we need to learn that will help us kind of understand a few things in the future. So the New Testament was originally written in Greek. And, And sometimes when they translate the Greek to English, we kind of can lose some meaning of words. Because oftentimes, or not oftentimes, but a few times, we, we have like, there's, there's a, something that gets translated into English, but it, the same word is used to translate multiple words in Greek. So word is a perfect example of this. Um, there are actually two Greek words that are translated word in the New Testament. One is logos, and one is rhema, okay? And so when you read it, it just says word. But if you go into the Greek, there are actually two different words that are being used. Logos can be used to refer to the written word, so the scriptures that we read in the Bible. And it's also used in reference to Jesus as the word of God. Like in John 1, chapter 1. So John is another section of the New Testament. John 1, 1, where it says, In the beginning was the word, is referring to Jesus, and the word in Greek is logos. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This is referring to Jesus. Now the lesser known of these two Greek words is rhema. And rhema is used to refer to the, the, the instant, the personal speaking of God in this moment. Like this speak, God speaking into this moment in time. Um, and so what we need to remember is God isn't silent today. Like they, they didn't just like put the Bible together and that's it. Like this is it, this is God speaking, this is all of it. God is still speaking today. His written word is a record of his speaking, but that's not all. He, he continues to speak to us today, and he wants to speak directly to us. He wants to speak into what is going on in our lives. And so today we're going to focus on how God speaks through his word, how he speaks through the Bible. Um, so we're going to look at this, we're, we're going to pick out this one verse out of what I, this whole section that I just read, Luke 24, 27, where it says, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he, meaning Jesus, explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So here Jesus is, he's walking along with the, these two people, and he doesn't just show up and say, hey, it's me, Jesus. Like, I'm not dead. I'm here. I'm alive. Like, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't do that, which he could have done. And if he had have done that, it would have been, like, they would have freaked out, right? Like, it would have been this amazing experience because here's the resurrected Jesus walking with them. But he doesn't do that. He feels compelled. He feels the need to basically take them through a two-hour Bible study. Right? He leads them through the scriptures, it says. Now, imagine if I said to you, um, okay, you should be here next Sunday. You are going to have the most incredible encounter with God. It's going to be amazing. You I, like Clear your calendar. Make sure that you are here next Sunday. And then you walked through the doors, and I told you, okay, everybody pull out your Bible, and we're going to do a two-hour Bible study. Would any of you be excited about that? Like, would it, there might be a few of you. There might be a few of you if I said, we're going to do a two-hour Bible study, you'd be excited. But for most of us, we wouldn't be excited about that because we long for experience. Like, we want experience. Um, and, and, but Jesus, he, he shows up with these two, and, and that's basically what he does. He does this, like, two-hour Bible study with them. It says he, he taught them the scriptures. He showed them the scriptures. And, and it would have been their tradition. It was an oral tradition, right? They, they memorized the scriptures and they would recite the scriptures. And, and so this is what is happening as they 
walk and talk. But even after his resurrection, like this is the resurrected Jesus. This, this whole thing, this incredible thing just played out and here the resurrected Jesus is standing in front of them, proof that everything that they thought might have just happened really did just happen. But yet, he feels it's necessary to anchor everything that they had just experienced securely in the scriptures. It's really kind of fascinating. Because for us, like we're obsessed with experience. So much so that we almost start to reject objective reality. But, but we, we need to realize that if we are followers of Jesus, if we are Christians and we are trying to pursue this, pursue him, our foundation it is built on the objective truth of the word of God in the Bible. That's our foundation. It's social media is filled with this, with ongoing arguments about, you know, who's right about this and who's wrong about that. And everybody seems to have a theory about everything and an opinion about everything. And that became very obvious to us during the pandemic. <laughs> you just, you couldn't get away from it. But the underlying issue in all of those things, it, it, it's not necessarily about the topic, it's actually more about whose truth is the true truth. Like whose truth is the true truth? And as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we have an answer to that question because the foundation of truth for us is the word of God in scripture. That's why the Bible is so important. For, for every Christian that has ever lived, the Bible is our ultimate authority. Our faith is anchored in this vast and ancient record of God's revelation regarding pretty much everything. Um, who, okay, in here, who would consider themselves the navigator when you're going on a trip? Is there anybody in here is like the navigator? Like, yeah, put your hand up. I'm, you're my people. You're my, not you, Peter. You are not a navigator. <laughs> it, like every family, right? Like, or every group of friends. Like, there's a navigator in there, right? Everybody needs a navigator. Um, a couple years ago, we went to Ottawa for my niece's wedding. And we were at the airport, we were getting on the plane, and Peter realizes that he doesn't have his license. Um, I don't know how he did it, but he managed to sweet talk his way on the plane. I, I don't know how. The charm. Yes, the gif and charm. Um, but he did, he got on the plane. But what that meant was when we landed in Ottawa, he couldn't drive the rental car because he had no license. So our roles got reversed very quickly. Uh, and I became the driver and Peter became the navigator. Now there are a lot of things that I could say about this. <laughs> but what I will say is that role reversal is not good for us. <laughs> it is not good for our Never give your husband control of the soundboard. <laughs> it is not good for our marriage. It was not good for our family dynamic. It's just not good. We, we, we have specific roles that we are good at for specific reasons. Uh, and so that didn't go overly well. But here's a really interesting thing about or the thing that I find really interesting about navigation systems now, right? Like, so Taylor and I were in London a few weeks ago, and we used an app to walk around London so that we knew where all the places were. Like, it's crazy how navigation works today. But when you're looking at your phone, right, you're looking at Google Maps or Apple Maps, or whatever you're using for navigation, like, you can look at that map, right? You can look on your phone, you can look at that map, you can follow the map. Or you could turn on that little voice that tells you, right? It says, turn right in 800 meters, right? 
although when I'm driving, I don't know how long 800 meters is, right? <laughs> yes. Um, but you have this little voice that can, can also help you navigate, right? So you can have this map and you can see the map and you can have this voice that, that's helping you kind of really kind of figure out this map, right? It's like an additional help. And when I think about the, like, the Bible and I think about this, this book that I'm trying to read that provides me with help and navigation for life, how much better is it if I can tune into that voice as well? Just like that navigation system. Like I can look at the map and I can figure it out probably, but it's so much more helpful to have that voice that is also helping to lead and to guide me. And, and as we try to learn to, to hear God's voice in scripture, I think it's really similar to that whole navigation system. The Bible provides constant guidance and wisdom and direction through all the twists and turns of life, but how much better can it be if we can click into that voice, the voice of God that is also speaking through the scriptures? Um, in Isaiah 30, verse 21, Isaiah is in the Old Testament, so before the birth of Jesus, um, and it says this, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Like how amazing, how affirming would that be to hear the voice, this is the way, walk in it. The voice of scripture, it can seem to us at first kind of direct and formal, sort of like that voice that says turn right in 800 meters. But the more we engage scripture and the more we come to, to hear God's voice, to know his, him speaking through his word, it becomes more familiar to us. It, it, it speaks intimately to our hearts, into our lives. And, and, and somehow, over time, it, it starts to become the most precious thing to us. And that's what I long for for us, is that scripture, the word of God, that God speaking through his word could become the most precious thing to us. Pete Gregg puts it this way in his book. When it comes to hearing God, the Bible is the language of his heart. Nothing he says in any other way or in any other context will ever override, undermine, or contradict what he has said in the scriptures. That's why Jesus doesn't show up on the road to Emmaus and say, hi, it's me. Instead, he takes considerable time to deliver a lengthy biblical exposition in which he reinterprets God's word radically in light of his own life, death, and resurrection. It's really cool when you think about it. But let's be super honest. The, the Bible can be really confusing. It can, it, it's really long. It's kind of boring sometimes if we're honest. None of you want to be as honest as me this morning, clearly. It, it's, it can be hard. Right? It's not always easy to read the Bible. So how do we engage what has been called the best-selling and least-read book in the world? Literally, they don't put the Bible on Amazon, the, the list, because it would be at the beginning. Like, across the world, the Bible is a best-selling book, but the least-read so how do we do that? How do we engage it? I want to offer you two ways that we can engage the Bible more. With your head and with your heart. And no one is ever asking you to approach the Bible and leave all of your logic and understanding and intelligence at the door. You need to bring it with you. We need to engage the Bible with our head and we also need to engage it with our heart. So first, with our head, it is important that we do a little bit of work to kind of understand the Bible. It's important for us to understand the context. People abuse the Bible all the time 
And, and a lot of the time it's because they haven't actually taken the effort to understand it, to understand the context, to understand the literature that they're reading. One, it's important to ask, what kind of literature am I reading? Because the Bible is full of all different styles of literature. A, a great example is the Song of Solomon. Okay, it's the most racy book in the whole Bible. If you haven't read it, just been warning you, it's racy. Um, but it's a love letter. It's not a description of how to structure your church or how to start a business. It's a love letter, and, and we need to know that when we read it. Or um, uh, Genesis 1. It, it's not a science textbook, it's Hebrew poetry. You read a science textbook in a different way than you read Hebrew poetry. It's important that we know that when we read it so that we can wrap our heads around and have a better understanding of what is being said. And so I wanna recommend to you today that something that would help you in reading the Bible would be a study Bible. It has what I, it's got little cheat notes on the bottom. So you read the study Bible and there's cheat notes on the bottom and it even like highlights sections that are like, oh, this might be a little confusing for somebody, so here's what it actually means. It's so helpful to us. Um, and you can, you can buy them anywhere. They're easy to find. Uh, I, I also want to suggest to you another resource. If you like podcasts, listen to The Bible Project. It's a great po podcast that helps explain different things about the Bible, genres, and, and themes, and it's super helpful. If you like to watch videos, go to YouTube because they have tons of videos too, and they're like little cartoon type videos, and I use them all the time, they're super helpful. We have to use whatever resources that we can to help us grow in our knowledge of the Bible. And if I'm gonna run through a bunch of these, um, and if you're thinking, oh gosh, I'm never gonna remember these resources that Tammy's talking about, I'm gonna email them to you. On Monday, tomorrow, I'm gonna email them all to you with the links. So if you're on our email list, you'll get it. If you're not on our email list, stop and see Selena right there at the welcome desk on the way back, and she will make sure you get on the email list. You will get all these links. Um, but there are just so many great resources for us that can help us navigate and learn how to really hear God's voice through the scriptures. Um, another great one, and I talked about this before here, is the Bible in One Year. Um, it's an app for your phone, um, and it's through Alpha, and Nicky Gumbel, who, who is one of the founders of Alpha, he, he, in his lovely accent, you can literally, you can read it, or he can talk to you. You can put your headphones in, and he can read through it for you. And it's beautiful because he explains things, he helps to apply things, you, you read all different sections of the Bible every day. And so for me, I have, I have it set so that at 8.30 every morning, uh, I get a notification on my watch, um, it vibrates, gives me a notification that it's time to read the Bible in one year, because I'm trying to read through the Bible in one year with this app. And so on Sunday mornings at 8.30, we actually have a team rally. So all of our team gets together before the service, and we celebrate wins, and we share things, and we pray for you before you come. Um, and so this morning, as I was coming down, my watch vibrated to tell me it's time to read the Bible in one year, because you gotta do what you gotta do, right? If you, gotta, if you need a reminder, make your, make your watch vibrate, make your phone vibrate, whatever you have to do. Um, but I usually would not look at it on Sunday morning. But this morning, for whatever reason, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna check it. I don't know what I was checking. It takes me half an hour to read it, but um, I don't know why. But here is what it said. It said, day 170, how to find treasure in the Bible. Do you think God speaks today? I mean, we're here, we're trying to learn how to find treasure in the Bible, how to hear God's voice through the scriptures. And this morning, the Bible in one year is gonna help me find treasure in the Bible. How cool is that? And Nicky Gumbel, in, this, in the introduction, he talks about um, how he, he met Jesus by reading the Bible 
He had a friend who started to go to church and gave his life to Jesus, and he wanted to rescue his friend from those crazy Christians. So he's like, I gotta read this Bible. I gotta read the Bible. And he read the Bible, and because he read the Bible, he found Jesus. God spoke to him through the Bible. So cool. We have to engage our brains. Okay, we have to engage our heads. We have to engage our brains. It's really going to help us to really hear God's voice in Scripture. And the other thing that we have to do is we have to engage our heart. Okay, there's, there's lots of people who study books like the Bible, and they can tell you lots of things about that book. But that book is not transforming their life. They, they may know lots about it. They may have studied lots about it. They may have an education about the Bible. But they're having very little conversation or revelation from the Bible. And we have to move from just knowing the Bible to being changed by the Bible, being transformed by the Bible. And so how do we do that? How do, how do we do that? I'm gonna recommend, again, another resource to you. This is like more of a teaching day than a preaching day. Um, but I want us to try to get as many tools as we can here. Um, I wanna recommend to you Lectio Divina. So that is, that, the word really means the holy reading. And it's a tradition, it's a monastic tradition, a practice of reading scripture and meditating on scripture and, and, and praying through scripture. And it's intended, it was always intended to, to create better communion with God, better relationship with God, better back and forth, better conversation with God and to increase people's knowledge of God's word. Now sometimes, um, when we talk about meditating, people think about like clearing their mind, like emptying their mind. That is not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is we're talking about meditating on a few words, a few verses from the Bible. So this Lectio Divina tradition would take a couple, just a few verses or a small passage of scripture and, and you would read through it and you would read through it and you would read through it. You would spend time filling your mind with the words of scripture. And then slowly you would move forward into more of a, a conversation with God about the things in, in those words that are standing out to you, which then moves into to prayer and praying around the scripture, around those words. Now, Pete Gregg in his book, he breaks it down into something very simple. So if you were with us a number of months ago, we walked through another one of his books on prayer. And he used the acronym PRAY, P-R-A-Y, in that book. He uses it again in this book to talk about Lectio Divina. And the acronym goes like this. The P is pause. So before we read scripture, we pause. And we just kind of quiet our hearts. We prepare our hearts to receive whatever God has for us in the scripture. And then we read and reflect. So we slowly read through it and we reflect on what is being said. We're, we're trying to pay attention to things that might stick out to us, Try, trying to pay attention to how God may be using it to speak to us. So we, we slowly read through it and we, we reflect and we rejoice about what is being said, what we can celebrate, and, and we repeat that process as it kind of penetrates our minds. The A is ask. So then we turn our reflections, the things that we feel like God may be saying to us, we turn our reflections into prayer. We pray, we have conversation with God about what we feel like he may be saying to us. And Y is yield. Yield is enjoying the presence of God, resting in his presence. And so, I want to recommend an app to you. I've recommended it before, but apps are amazing ways to help us really um, dive into scripture. There's a great app called Lectio365. Again, it'll be in the email. It's a great tool. It walks you through this process. You basically hit play on the app and it walks you through this process of listening to, meditating on the word of God and then leads you through these times of, of prayer. It's if you want to learn more and experience Lectio Divina, like this is the way to do it. Follow along on this app. 
Uh, Pete Gregg in his book says this, but however wonderful an experience may be, and no experience could be, could ever be more wonderful than personally encountering the risen Lord, the Bible remains the primary arbiter of truth for Christians, whether we feel it or not. And the main way in which we hear God speak, this must surely be one of the reasons why Jesus is so discreet on the road to Emmaus. He knows that an extraordinary experience and a personal encounter are insufficient unless accompanied by a biblical explanation. It is critically important to our walk with Jesus that we learn to read and receive the scriptures. Now, I'm gonna be totally honest with you this morning because I've, I'm gonna assume that there are some of you in this room that are like, I have tried reading the Bible and I can't. I just can't, it's so hard and I, I just, I've tried and I can't. I find reading the Bible hard too. I do. I find it hard too. The reason I know about all these apps is because I need all these apps. I need the help too. And if that's you today, and if you have been discouraged in your journey of trying to read the Bible, if you have been uh, challenged, if you've found it hard to, to read and you've given up, don't. Try something new. Try one of these apps. Try a new way to engage your brain. Because we can't just think about the Bible theologically. We, have, we also have to think about it, we approach it psychologically. I'm gonna invite the band to come. Um, we all learn in different ways. Like, we all process in different ways. We all learn in different ways. And so there are different ways that we might need to approach Scripture so that we can actually receive it. Some of, some of us process, we're, we're auditory. And so maybe you need to read the Bible out loud to really receive it. Or maybe, like me, you need to put in those headphones and you need to listen to it being read to you. There are so many beautiful um, uh, recordings of the Bible, and you can listen to it, and it's amazing. And, and so if that's you, if that's how you learn, embrace it. Embrace it, try it, embrace it, and, and see how God may use that to speak through the scriptures to you. Maybe you're a visual processor. You know, maybe you need to see things. Maybe you need a Bible that has like a big blank white section on the side so that you can draw out the scriptures and you can doodle and you can draw pictures and you can highlight like you got you're going to need to mark that bible up like crazy um so that it really gets sunk deep into your heart like maybe that's what you need to do maybe you need to watch it so you've heard me talk about this before but you should watch the chosen like, The Chosen is this great, it's an app, you can, or there are other ways to watch it online, but it, it's, it's this beautiful visual of who Jesus is and how he interacts with his disciples and what he taught, and, and you get to see yourself in those interactions, and you can literally watch the New Testament on a screen, and you can engage it that way. If that's you, if you're a visual learner, you should try all those things because it makes the Bible come alive to us when we really engage the way that we learn. Or maybe you're an active processor and what you're going to need to do is you're gonna read something in the Bible and you're gonna to need to go do it. You're gonna to have to go out and do it. So maybe you read in the Bible that um, to, to give away the shirt on your back. I don't recommend just taking your shirt off and giving it to someone in that moment, but Maybe you need to go home and you need to go through your clothes and pack up some clothes you don't wear anymore and give them away and experience the scripture through your actions. See, we serve a creative God. You just have to go outside today and look at the beauty of creation. We serve a creative God and he's created you all differently. We all process differently. We all think differently. And instead of fighting against it and thinking that there's something wrong with you because you can't sit and read this book, embrace all of it. Find new ways to embrace the scriptures. 
Find new ways to step into the scriptures, to experience the scriptures, because God is speaking there. He is speaking there. And if we struggle to engage it by just reading it, we need to find other ways. And so today I want to encourage you in that. I want to encourage you this week to try something different. Try a new way of engaging the scriptures. Try Lectio 365. Try the Bible in one year. Watch something from the the Bible Project or listen to their podcast. Learn more about the Bible and, and how it's built and created and the different, like do whatever, pick one and try something new for this week and see how God may use it to speak to you, to bring the scriptures alive to you in a way that he hasn't before. And and seriously, if that's you and you have given up on the Bible, please, please try again, try a new way but try again, because it is the primary place where God is trying to communicate with us. His his heart for us, his desires for us, for our world, is the primary place where he's trying to communicate that to us. And so let's embrace it together. Let's, Let's go on this journey together. And over this next week, if we can commit to trying something new, I'm excited to hear the stories at the end of the week about how you have heard from God through the scriptures in a new and a fresh way. Let's pray together. Lord, today we are thankful for your word. We're thankful, God, for the way that you speak to us through the scriptures. God, we are thankful um, that you have given us this gift of your word and that it can be alive and active and it can transform our lives. And so Lord, I pray for every person in this room. I pray God that you would give them the courage this week to try something new, to try again maybe, um, to engage the scripture, to engage your word. And Lord, I pray that you would honor that. That you would honor it, you would honor their heart to seek you and know you and that Lord, you would speak through the scriptures in ways that you never have before. That we would see the scriptures in ways that we never have before. And that, Lord, it would begin to transform our lives. And so, Lord, I just I just ask that you would do something really incredible in this next week as we pursue you through your written word that is living and active um, and, and, and a gift to us. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with us?
something new, believe that God is speaking, that he wants to speak to you, that you can hear him and see what he might do with that. Uh, if we can be praying for you, we would love to pray for you this morning. Um, there will be a few of us around up here in the front. Uh, there are people on our team that love to be praying with you. If you'd rather just leave a prayer request and have people pray for you during the week, you can do that at the welcome desk. If you would like those resources and you're not on our email list, sign up again. Uh, we'll make sure that you get them tomorrow. And just a reminder that next week we are shifting to a 10 a.m. service, all in, all together uh, for the summer. Plan to come for the morning, come for lunch. We're having pizza in the park. It's going to be a great Sunday. Um, have a great rest of your week, everyone. We'll see you next time.